Hello, welcome to the third in this uh, new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merch, hello, and Carl Pilkington. All right. We've had loads of emails. Uh, thank you for those. Sorry we can't reply to them all personally, but uh, keep them coming. Some interesting ones. There's one in particular here uh, from a guy who says, I see there is less swearing now you're charging for the podcast. Dumbing down already, question mark. Yeah. Well, interesting. I don't know how that's dumbing down. Well, no, no, not swearing. Oh, that's interesting. Not swearing is dumbing down. And also, the fact that he's complaining that we're not swearing enough. <laughs> yeah. What sort of a cunt would bother writing that email? I don't know, mate. I don't know. But I know he's just some kind of fucking cocksucker. What have you got, Annie? Well, um, now of course, a couple of weeks back you gave the rather long-winded but fascinating, um, sort of brain teaser conundrum philosophical question about the, uh, heaven and hell doors. I know. And there's been a number of responses to that. I know, that. I know, Explain I know. Explain your error. Well, I got it, I know, I realised as soon as we put it out there that I, I should have said, uh, assume no prior knowledge. Otherwise you can just say, hold up a cat and say, is this a dog? Or you can say, what's my name? But they don't know anything about you, that's the thing. They only know about their selves, and I should have said that. Yeah. You so know, are you willing to just now say that you've embarrassed yourself? Oh, I've embarrassed myself. I should have said, yeah. yeah, it's got to be about, it's only about the, uh, you can ask questions. Well, do you know what? It's a bigger man than many that can admit that. Mistake. Or a man that's banged to rights and obviously caught out <laughs> yeah, and has exactly. no choice. <laughs> well, it's quite interesting to, to wade through the emails and find out uh, the kind of people that are listening and get a sense of the different listeners. And uh, I know you, Rick, have met some of the big celebrity names that have listened to the show, and it's yeah. sort of because you've actually met them. Mm. Um, but it's, now we've got celebrities who are just emailing themselves, e emailing in, just letting us know. This one is from a guy called Aaron. He says, My name's Aaron Douglas, and I play Chief Tyrol on TV's Battlestar Galactica. Oh, right. And he listens to the show in his trailer. Now, I don't watch Battlestar Galactica. I hear it's very good. Yeah, but it's I, nice I, to I, know I that. I, I, don't watch, I, I don't watch any of those things, but uh, uh, that's. Uh, but I, but uh, I'm nice, it's nice that. That Chief Tyrol, and for those of you that, that, that watch Battlestar Galactic, I'm sure that means something. But so nice that he got in touch. But I'm just thinking, who would you, in an ideal world, Rick, who would be your ideal listener, a celebrity listener? Um, well, it's not so much celebrities for me. I like the idea that uh, captains of industry or, or scientists or people actually doing something worthwhile are listening. That's what excites me, because they hear... You know, we've had a couple of emails from people who are doing, um, you know, PhDs and, and, uh, psychologists and that, and that, and that excites me more that these academics are listening. Or so, or, uh, I mean, who's the weirdest person you think that? Who's got, who should have more time on their hands, you know, um, uh, uh you know, Stephen Hawking. Imagine Stephen <laughs> Hawking listening yeah. to this show. You know, he's putting together the, you know, the formulation for uh, the, the universe, but he's gonna listen to a little bit of monkey news from Carl Pilkington. Imagine uh, Stephen Hawking emailing us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I mean, that would just blow our minds, wouldn't it? I was, that he's I was, got time to do that. That he's got the inclination to bother doing that. He's, al he's always online, though, isn't he? He's always hooked up. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> well, he's always got that little computer on. Why not? Sure, that's one of the perks. You can just bung an email out whenever. <laughs> I'm not having a go. I just mean that's that's what I'm thinking. He's sat there with his little computer. I'd, 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 out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, I'd probably like to have a chat with him about space and that because I can't get my head around it. Carl, what? you can't get your head around frozen foods. What a chance are you can have with the universe. No, but just putting stuff out there. The, you know, I mean, it freaks me out. When I'm when I'm lying there in bed at night, huh. and I think about how this world on, on Friday, right? I was in I was in bed, with Suzanne, and I said, "Could the world fall?" Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like something from Chicken Licking. Wow, I that's mean, a hell of a bit of pillow talk, that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't foreplay hell? <laughs> oh God! But but I'd like to sort of have a chat with him because I reckon he could put it in a way that I could understand it. Oh, I wish an Inuit was listening. Did I not tell you this? We, we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said, uh, I think, well, I don't think he lives, he lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologise for, if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit and he listens to the show. Half Inuit? Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I was so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think of those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are also Inuit. Inuit, yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet someone there. <laughs> yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. You know? Skinning stuff. <laughs> Skinning stuff, yeah. What, what stuff to skin? Uh, you know, seals. Seals, yeah, sure. 
That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, like, if, if seals died out, right, would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal? That sort of in between something already, it's between a fish and a... <laughs> And, and a, a dog, dog. innit? <laughs> I knew you were gonna say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to I never dog. Understand it. Maybe what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined and it I I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have like you know? You've got a dog. You've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. I don't know. What, this I is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's he doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say! <laughs> it's between a fish and a dog! That- that bloke, the Eskimo, who emailed in, Inuit. would he- would he be in a igloo thing? Probably not, no. Well, no, not- I mean, I don't think many igloos have got internet capabilities, so I don't know, I don't want to slag them <laughs> off. But why aren't we saving them? Why aren't we- <laughs> Maybe there's sort of... When you build it, leave a little hole. Yeah. That's where the- But yeah. there's kind of igloo internet cafes. They yeah, they go there, there, they all go to one <laughs> igloo, yeah. yeah. But why- why are they being left alone? To live like that when it isn't great. What? Well, we're always eager to help everyone in the world, aren't we? We're always like going, oh, look, them people are fed up, let's build the city up for them, give them a, you know, coffee shop and all the rest of it. Mm. They're mm. being left Proper alone. For them. They're being left alone in, in igloos and stuff. Yeah. Why isn't anyone saying- But they're not asking for help. They're happy. Well, they're not necessarily happy, but they're, they're, that's the way they live, that's where they choose to live. But why hasn't anyone just gone over and gone, you know what, we can make it a bit better for you? Well, they have. I've never had a leaflet through the door saying help an Eskimo out or, you know, clothing for Eskimos. There's m the most remote people in the world, eventually someone gets them some whiskey and fags and that's the end of them as a culture. It happens all around the world. There can be this idyllic, idyllic world where there's no stress and soon they're, they're watching Come Dancing on telly, knocking back some <laughs> whiskey and smoking 40 fags but, a day. But they're not moving, Surely are dancing they? on ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but what what I mean is like Oxfam collects clothes for people in Africa where it's warm. Probably don't need a jacket. Nothing for Eskimos where it's it's freezing, where they'd be quite happy to get a jumper in the post. Right. Okay. So what are you suggesting to Africa? We send what parasols and Bikinis. sun cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Right. Guns Traven or something. Oh, right, yeah. Um, he's, he's pretty good. Mm hmm Um, just like the way, you know, he cuts stuff up, shows you how the body works and that. Sure. Um. And have you learnt anything from that? Um, well I don't, is he, is he a proper doctor? Cause it's just that he's always, I mean I could cut a body up, I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, <laughs> is anyone keeping an eye on him sort of going, well who is he actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's a proper doctor. Well, well he's, he sort of, uh, sort of cuts bodies up on the telly and, uh, sort of goes, is, is how like intestines work or whatever. Alright. And he just, uh, he holds them up, fills them with food. Um, and he goes, look, they go fatter. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because it, uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was like miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just have a, just have a straight, you know what yeah, I mean, straight it's to, down. It's to increase the surface area for absorption. 
So a foot long intestine, you wouldn't absorb much food, whereas you go down, you know. Yeah, but just have more points in it where it has to go through some sort of filter. What are you talking about? Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us. It really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. In yeah, your mind, you some kind of what, some kind of kaplunk. No, style but what, what what I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur, and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. Now we're eating like yogurt, <laughs> so I mean <laughs> we, we don't we don't need anything that you know is 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 doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how. how <laughs> She's got teeth, but she don't need them. No, but that's well, how. Well, she could have her intestines removed then. Well, no, but this is that what I'm saying. That's our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at it on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other, so they were like, "What can we do?" Right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got like three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they didn't have no, a laugh. What, what, like, what doctor's doing this then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and- No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take another. They don't, doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we, Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. No, <laughs> sign you're this. Paying. If you sign this, you give my consent. <sighs> but, but we, you know, it is annoying. What do you think these doctors sit around doing? Playing Mr. Potato? Or what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do. If someone wants it, and, and twins sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like. So, it, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, would, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, uh, to make him look different, right? Not. I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of, there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like, like all this. Right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle, right? Mm-hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um... So he was at the doctors and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers, how many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where... His, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, that's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've, I assume they, they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. No, I still think it's there with like a little knuckle and a, and you know, fingernail, fingernail and that. Well, on. I'm, I assure you it isn't. They've probably used the finger as a basis to then build up some sort of uh, uh, knob based no, cause it, organ. If, if you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger for- Well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your, your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft, uh, t t near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But, that's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah, use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I, I saw some bloke the other day in a meeting, and on his desk, he had a picture <sighs> of of his kids who were twins, right? And uh, they did, they looked alike, and he did that thing of dressing them the same, that that sort of thing, that sort of, you know, annoys me, right? Um, and I sort of said, you know, you've only got a small desk, just have a picture of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me like I was mental. 
Just That's amazing. Around. It's not. It's, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's sort of common you sense. You know what you've come up with there? No solution to anything. <laughs> That's what you've come up with there. More you've come up with the best no solution <laughs> I've ever heard yeah. in my life. Hey, or it's solutions to problems <laughs> that don't exist. No, yeah. because more room on the desk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's no solution to a problem that didn't exist in the first place. Well done. There was a picture on the, when I was on the, the plane coming back from here, there was a picture of this new luxury hotel. It'll be, I think, $10,000 a night to stay there. It looked extraordinary. It was a hotel and the best rooms were built under the water, under the sea. Wow. So it was an amazing, the best hotel room you've ever seen, mm -hmm. but surrounded on all sides by glass and out of it you could see the sea, the sharks, the fish. Mm, I don't think I'd like that. No? But that, again, that's just one yeah. of the hotels where it's... Where it's over the top for over the top sake, isn't it? Like where they have twelve yeah. course meals. Well, just have two, but make them bigger, rather than dragging it out and get, there's a, there's there's the first course. You know, a couple of you know snails. Yeah, it's just uh, for me all that is. Don't eat a snail. Don't have one snail. Have one. Eat one big tortoise. <laughs> If you want slow food, don't have the loads of little snails. Yeah, there's a giant tortoise. Duck into that. Feeds ten. <laughs> but, 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 but it's what you were saying before. When you start having to take a risk with food, like the fish that can kill you mm. if you eat it, don't bother. Uh, there's apparently a delicacy in Japan, again, someone could verify this, where they eat a live little octopus. And it can stick to your throat, because it's obviously fighting for its life. I mean, good, again. You don't need to eat a live octopus. What are you thinking? How uh, cruel is that? Well, how fresh do you need your food? <laughs> it's just not, it's not, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, re I always remember this story when I was a kid about, um, some bloke who, uh, a bit, bit sad, the story, but weird. He had, um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, uh, carry on with your life, right? It's not gonna be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, uh, you know, plenty of vitamins and stuff, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was, he was fed up because he loved his meat. Um, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. All he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of like steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant. Cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate just about to tuck in and the cancer comes out from <laughs> his throat. <laughs> what? No, he's some, I know, he sounds really weird, but he's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some, some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of, it was, it was coming out waiting for the meat. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was sort of dying. Again, it, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from is uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he are you talking to eat about? Meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there in the throat. Why? I tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I'd go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, he choked to death on this thing and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't have given him the meat after all. Just That's a bollock you, story. You it's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you, if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're, they're all over the plate. Yeah. And you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. <laughs> the other thing that I was told when I was younger about medical stuff and that, um... Who's telling you this stuff? My mum. My mum told me about it. Jeez. Because she always says to me, Dad, because he has too much meat, and she's always like, you know. Remember the, the, the. Feather with the. And he goes, yeah, the oh, troll in his throat. throat. But, um, <laughs> my gran, uh, she had something, uh, wrong with her eyes. And they sort of took them out, <laughs> and they were just dangling on her cheek. And she could still see through them. They were operating on her. Well, yeah, you would have, yeah. They sort of say. No, 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 she wouldn't have been conscious, though. No, they were then. Because oh, it's yeah. something to do with the eyes, and it, it's like. If no. You, no, it's no good operating on eyes if your eyes are asleep. What do you mean, your eyes are asleep? It's like a heart, isn't it? You want to keep them awake. No, so you, keep what do you mean open. you want to keep them awake? What, heart surgery is blokes awake? Stop talking shit no, what, all your life. What I mean is they don't stop the heart. They, they, they sort of course they don't stop your heart, because it kills you. Yeah, I know. So what I mean is it's like the eyes, they wanted to make sure they were working, 
So the the only way to do it is keep her awake. No, it's not because you don't know whether they're working or not. You can't see what she sees. What do you think? It, it, you, you can plug something in and see what people are thinking. It was something like no, that. no. It wasn't something like that. Well, she could see. She no, said she it was couldn't. really weird. How, how like you know you can see. She could see her knees. <laughs> 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 That is bollocks. Oh, chimpanzee, that is only gone and written it down, the little... That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> where, where, where do you come from? Uh, okie dokie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a terrible place that we don't know whether we put our left leg in or our right <laughs> leg in. Uh, sometimes we shake it all about. We're but, not sure if we should. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> Conga! <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a. <laughs> Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> We are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the, who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all, it had been raining really heavily and that, and it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here? What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, oh, come, come round to us. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He wanted to be in the army but was turned away and that's the closest thing you can sort of... How is that like similar the, to living oh, in exactly the army? Oh, that's exactly like the army, yeah, yeah, where they teach you trades and, uh, you know, engineering know. and he's, flying. He's happy. he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. What's he got down there? Just, just stuff, just like a sleeping bag, a lamp. He that's dug, he, he's dug himself a subterranean cave. Near my old infant school, they knocked it down because it was like a wreck. You'd, you'd be in the class and you could lean <laughs> on the wall. Yeah, some And your would go through it and stuff. And, um, they knocked it all down, and I think that's when he was at his most happy, this bloke. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> shock me. When the, the tales I've heard of horses in houses and big-headed kids with webbed hands and feet, uh, and, uh, you know, and him, um, I, I believe that someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. That isn't bizarre to me. That's to- that's <laughs> You spent to far too long with him if that, now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I, I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do when your budgie died? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a, a man living in a hole <laughs> it's not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. I read me science magazine. Some things I learnt from the science magazine. Number one, space is running out of space. We should stay out of the sea because shark attacks are up. Yeah, probably four a year now. <laughs> well, he just says here, we should just stop going in the sea. Yeah. There's no need for it. Exactly. Why is there no need for going in the sea? Just because there isn't now, is there? We've got loads of land. So just, you know, one or the other. We walked out of the sea. Now, this is what I mean about going backwards. Getting back in it again. <laughs> We came from the sea originally, now we're going back in it. Don't go in it. Unless you're in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the rules! The rules! According <laughs> the to Carl Pilkington! The rules of Carl Pilkington. Oh, God! Did the podcast and then went for a walk round Manchester Square. Years ago, a woman lived round there who had a head like a pig. She was known as the Pig Woman of Manchester Square. <laughs> that made me think if there were other pig-headed women knocking about London. Do you know what I mean? Why, why was she nicknamed that? Why not just... The pig-headed woman. That suggests to me like there was loads of pig-headed women and that's the one of Manchester Square. <laughs> right. 
Well, no, it was more to do with identifying her, not amongst other pig of the women, but go, have you seen the pig woman of Manchester Square? I.e., go down there and see the pig woman, it's in Manchester Square. What happens if she's walked off from there, though, and you go, well, no, but I saw one on New Cavendish Street. <laughs> no, well, she'll, woman? she'll always come back if you rattle the feet. Watched <laughs> a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. I mean, uh, it, it is hard to concentrate. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a, a buffoon going, I'm just gonna sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point <laughs> of that? Yeah. What is the point of that? I mean, it's possible, but why do- do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the conga. Well, yeah, or during, during ballet. You know, I mean, ballet, they're just dancing. You don't need to listen to the words. Just have yeah. a conversation. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are, there, there's bees, they love a drink, um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol, they drink 100%, they drink ethanol, you know, I don't know why. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? A bee can take in the equivalent of like 20 litres of wine, right? But some bees, get uh, addicted in, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bounces. Yeah, they sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face. But I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh, let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because well, they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly. Okay, it's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me <laughs> not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky, going, "Oh, what are we doing?" Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody says. There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what you're drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Well, it's that time, isn't it? What? Rockbusters. Ah, oh, yes, the time that no one looks forward to. Uh, Jim Pansy, that Rockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck laughs> right, so, uh, gave you three clues last week, three cryptic clues. Mm. Um, some initials of a band or an artist you emailed in. Mm. Uh, what Rob, again? Rob Harding got it, right? Oh, nice work, Rob. So, well done. Mm. Um, the three clues, yeah, the first one was, uh, RP for the initials, uh, and the clue was steal that woman's flower, right? Yeah. So that was a cryptic clue. The answer there is, is Rob Erplant. Rob er, Rob, Rob er Rob, Plant. Rob Erplant. I don't know who that is though, Rob, is it? There's Rob, no Rob, artist called Robert that's, Plant. That's like Robert Plant. Robert, 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 no, 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 Robert, Robert Plant yeah, is his name. Yeah, but you don't say that, you sort of go, oh yeah, I'm into it. Well, you do uh, say it. Have <laughs> you got the, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it means like... Album by Robert Plant. Yeah, Ro yeah, Robert, no Robert Plant. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go, what? <laughs> I the, don't know who, ru ru I don't know who, plant. are you saying rubber plant? Uh, the second what one. What are you saying there, Carl, though? The second one was, uh. It doesn't work. The initial was B, and then that was keep whacking the cooker with a stick, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't have to be a stick, we pointed that out, just keep whacking the cooker. Keep whacking yeah. the cooker, yeah. Uh, that was B, that was B oven. 
Beat Oven. Yeah. I don't know who that is either. Is that a group? Be- <laughs> beat Oven? Is that the Beatles? Who's the Beat Ovens? Classical sort of stuff. Beethoven. Beat Oven. Uh, no, you said, you said Beat Again, though, they got it. Ba- it oh. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm just saying though. They, no, they no, got no, it. it's oh, bollocks. Rob because Harding got it. No, no, no. Beat Oven yeah. is not Beethoven. They got it. Do you understand? The last one, the initial was M, right? Uh, I, I just point. want to know who Robber Plant is. Don't, don't be worrying about Robber. No. Because it's not uh, a name I've done. He's not the one in Le Zeppelin, is he? So, M was the initial, the clue was Venice. It's, it's all water, isn't it? How would you describe it? There's, there's hardly any land, right? Uh, so, canal. if there's hardly any land, right, it's more water, what sort of water would you get, right? Wet. And then, then, what? Wetville. Tap water. Wetville. No, but just, like, water, that in Venice, what sort of water is it? It's, it's sort of... Muddy. Right? Um, no, no. Muddy waters. No, but how would you describe Venice? What's the, what's the, um, if there's more- But what's the, what's the uh, initial again? M. If there's more, if there's more- Muddy waters. If there's more sea than land, Mm, what would you say? Would you say, you'd probably say there's sort of more more of it is sea, isn't it? More, more More is sea. sea. More is sea. More is sea. More is sea. More is sea. So that's, that's the answer. I don't know who that is. More is More is sea. More is sea. So, well done to, uh... <laughs> that's the worst one you've ever done! Well it's ridiculous. Done to, well, that's it really the worst ridiculous. you've ever done. It's ridiculous. Well, more is C. Right, if, they, if, they, if they're that mm. shit, don't do it anymore. So, well done to, uh, Robert Hardin. He's in, he's in <laughs> London. Right. Right, this week's, there's another three. Oh, so, God, uh, we haven't even come to this week's, I forgot oh, that. Oh, fuck, this is, this is the, uh, this is the last time we do this. Monkey News Mac next week. Oh. No. Yeah, well, this is shit. This is pathetic. Really, it, it's making you look a bigger moron than you are. More is C. No, Robert Plant. They don't fucking work. Let's they, do Monkey they're News. They're right. They're getting them right, though. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Bit of shit. Right, uh, the first one, the initials ND. Right? ND. Who is it? You sing songs on that, right? ND. Uh, the clue. That Jamaican fella doesn't want anything. <laughs> so, you've got to sort of imagine, oh, why is it a Jamaican fella? Yeah. Right? That Jamaican fella doesn't want anything. N-D. Second one, the initial is E. I ask him to pass me the ball by using their head. Right? It's a band or an artist again. I ask him to pass me the ball by using their head. And the last one, T-R, the initials, T-R, He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. What I forgot? What? He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. So what? What I forgot? And what's the T R T R for the uh, for the initials? Right. Email in podcast at rickygervais dot com. We just pick a winner, send you some stuff. That's rockbusters. Right. Well, that's uh, end of another half hour of. Could I just say this? Absolute. Drivel. Yeah, I, I mean, think. really more than ever. I mean, I uh, mean, can I be honest with you now, Rick? I'm embarrassed to put my name to this week's show because the amount of twaddle there's been. It's spoken. my name on it, which is the embarrassing. Yeah. But you know, let, let's let's take the the village idiot uh, that is Carl Pilkington. It's his fault because I realised not only he's got an head like an orange, he's got a fucking IQ of an orange. <laughs> <laughs> so it's goodbye from me. I'm not saying my name. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Don't make, well, why are you mentioning well, okay. my name? Don't mention but my mostly, name. But mostly, goodbye from Carl Pilkington. Mainly his fault. <laughs>